In this video, we will cover example three from section 3.7. So in this problem, it says, find the point on the graph of the function that is closest to the given point. Well, if they're telling you the word closest, what they want you to do is they want you to minimize the distance. Which means our primary equation is going to be the distance formula which is the square root of x, no, I'm sorry, y2 minus y1 squared plus x2 minus x1 squared. Now, in the test and in the review and in some of the homework assignments, if they have this problem, they tell you that it's enough to maximize d squared. Because if the number inside the radical is minimized, then when you square root it, it will also be the smallest um, radicand. It will be the smallest value. And if the number inside is the biggest it can be, when you square root it, it'll still be the biggest it can be. Okay? So it will be enough just to use this. <coughs> Excuse me. So instead of writing d squared, I'm just going to use capital D. But what are the two points that I'm taking the distance between? The two points that I'm taking the distance between are negative 5, 3, and some random value x and y. My job is to find these values for x and y. <coughs> Excuse me. So if I plug them into this equation, um, I'll have this y value minus y1, which is 3, plus this x value, not knowing what it is, minus a negative five. Now this needs to all be in one term. Remember, before you take the derivative of it, it all has to be in one variable. And remember, x is the independent variable, which means I need to write this in terms of x. But I know that f of x is just a fancy way of saying y. So this is my secondary equation, y equals x minus 2, or I'm sorry, x minus 1 squared. So now I have my distance in one variable. So let's go ahead and multiply this out before we take the derivative. It'll be more complicated if we wait. So in the inside here, I have x squared minus 2x plus 1 minus 3. And in here, I have x plus 5 squared. So if I simplify this, I will get x squared minus 2x minus 2 squared. And here I will get x plus 5 squared. Now this is not too difficult to take the derivative of. Um, you can either choose to expand it out now or take the derivative of it and then expand it then. I'm going to go ahead and choose to expand it out now. So if I take this times itself, I'll end up with x to the fourth minus 2x cubed minus 2x squared minus 2x cubed plus 4x squared plus 4x minus 2x squared plus 4x plus 4 plus x squared plus 5x plus 5x plus 10. If I go ahead and FOIL those out. So essentially there's two of these multiplied together and I'm FOILing them all out. And there's two of these multiplied together, and I'm foiling that all out. Um, so what I end up with in the end is x to the fourth, and negative 2x to the third, negative 2x to the third makes negative 4x to the third. Then I have um, negative 2x squared plus 4x squared is 2x squared minus 2x squared cancels it out and I have plus this x squared here. Then I have 4x plus 4x is 8x, plus 5x is 13x, plus 5x is 18x. So that takes care of all the x's. And then for, um, oh, this should not be 10. 5 times 5 is not 10. 5 times 5 is 25. So I end up with my constants 4 plus 25, which is 29. So this is the function that I need to take the derivative of. 
Now when I do that, I get 4x cubed minus 12x squared plus 2x plus 18 plus 0. But I'm not going to write the plus 0. Okay. Then now I need to find the, I need to set this equal to 0 to find my critical values. Now this is not fun to set equal to 0. Okay. Um, unless you have a graph or you use some of the old techniques, you're not going to be able to determine what the zeros are for this particular function. Now I do have a graphing calculator, so let's see if it'll help me if I do graph this. Now they're not testing me on graphing this particular problem, so I am allowed to use a calculator for this portion of the um, work. Oops, what did I have in there? I saw parentheses. Oh yes, delete. There we go. So let's graph that and see if we can catch the x value. Ah, we got one right there. So there's actually only one solution to this and that is x equal to negative one. Since it's the only solution by according to the graph, that's the x value that we were looking for. If you want to know what the y value is, you have to plug that x value into the function. So I get negative 2 squared, which equals 4. So the closest point to negative 5, 3 is the point negative 1, comma 4.